Welcome to Give Your Wall Some Soul. I'm Shannon Grissom. Today we're going to be working on an iris. I stretched, uh, I took a look at the canvas and got it sketched out before I came over here today. And um, God, I'll never buy this canvas again. Uh, the, it's the kind with the spline in the back. And the spline would be similar to what you would use in a screen door. And what happens is with moisture and heat, it stretches and you get lumps and bumps. I'm going to take it off the, the uh, easel and show you exactly what I mean. I had to re-stretch this because there were too many lumps. Sometimes if you just get a little bump in your canvas, what you can do is put a little water over it on the back and it'll stretch back out. Unfortunately, that was not the case with this. I had already spent a lot of time drawing out my um, subject and getting it ready for the show and so, <laughs> so there was no way I was going to do it again. So I re-stretched it and that was really really uh, a pain. So from now on, I'm going, I like this, this type of canvas because if you can see the edges, it go, it's wrapped all the way around. And so you don't see the staples on the edge. What I'm going to do in the future is buy a canvas that's actually stapled on the back. This spline, which looks, let's see if I can see it at the top. See this little screen door looking little thing? This comes out, gets loose, and, oh, it's a mess. Um, your, your canvas really looks bad. So from now on, I'm, I'm going to be more careful with the type of canvas I buy. I will probably have to restretch this again when I get back to my studio. Today we're painting a white iris on, uh, instead of using the traditional background that's in my reference photo, which are leaves in its normal natural setting, um, I thought it was just a little too graphic, a little too busy. I wanted something calmer, so, uh, well, <laughs> while red is not exactly calmer, it, it, it's, a, it's a nice uh, backdrop for it. So I'm going to go ahead and put some red down. This is going to be straight tube color, because I'm just in red mode today. And I'm going to start basing in the background. I met somebody t uh, this weekend, Eleanor, at a at one of the art shows that I was in, and she said, well, can you do something step by step so that even a beginner can get it? Um, I'm hoping to do that today so that um, you can take a look at this, watch this, and create your own iris doing this. First, what I'm going to do is paint the background. I'm dipping my brush in lots of medium. I want my paint to be runny and be the consistency of ink. Now I know that this initial red is a little bit much and a little bit bright, but that's what I'm going to put down as a base. I can always tone it down. I'm starting in the back. I'm being a little more careful than I normally would because I've got a painting back there and it's done and I don't want to splash paint on it. Normally, you know, I just kind of throw it on there. Just a solid mass of red. Red's a warm color, so normally that comes forward, and you wouldn't want something so bold in the background. But I like to break the rules now and then. Come up with something really pretty. Now, I'm not worried about whether I'm going into the actual iris part itself. I'm going over the lines a little bit, and I'll clean it up later. I was also conscious of the shapes that I have here. We talk about negative shapes, interstitial space, it's the same thing. This shape here has to be as pleasing or important as the shape of the iris itself. And I also want to make sure that this negative space, this down here, is not the same as that space there. Too much symmetry is really boring. So I'll put this in. I'm using crisscross strokes, and that helps give it some interest, even though it's a flat color. It's going to have different texture. The one thing that's going to be different about this painting than many of my other paintings is I'm going to try and get it as close as I can to a finished state in one sitting. 
So that means it's going to have to be thicker and looser. Now again, this red is just, you know, it's way too much for a finished thing, but for, for a beginning, it's great. I'll start at the bottom now. See, there's a bump in the canvas there that I'm going to have to fix later. And I'm not holding this like a pencil. It's more like a, a knife or a sculpting tool. That way I'm not getting too caught up in details. You can see in this place where it was, I'm pushing it against this and the bar that's holding, the, the stretcher bar that's holding the canvas in place is making a line that I don't want. So I'm actually going behind it and poking my finger out there so that it doesn't do that. If you do it later, you spend a lot of time trying to cover it up. I don't know if you can see this. It's just way down here in the bottom. This is not really a shadow. This is actually where, where another stretching problem. And so I'm going to have to, I'm really going to have to restretch this whole thing once it's dry. I tried doing it. I don't do a lot of stretching because I found that it's not worth the time and doesn't save you that much money to stretch your own canvas. And I've done it on my own. And what I realize is that I really do need to spend the money and get the canvas pliers. Because they've got a wider base on the plier. When you grab the canvas, it's not going to rip it. It's actually just going to grab it, and you'll be able to have better grip on there. I'll have to bring the pliers in so you can see what I'm talking about. I'm all for not using special gadgets if you can get away with it, but sometimes you just have to have them. Okay, I'm just scribbling again. You know, th this iris isn't going to be any different from the the red or any of the scribblingness of the apples that are in the background. It's just a different subject. Paint everything the same way. And let's see. I'll put that over here. We'll look at this side. Later, in order for this to work, I'm definitely going to have to put some dark under here. But for right now, this is good. Again, I'm using a lot of medium to make it move fast. When we talk about the interstitial space, this, this shape's already bugging me. It's funny, I didn't see that before. Sometimes I don't see things until I start painting. But rather than get hung up on something that I don't like or that might not be working, I'm going to get the canvas covered first. Just keep going. OK, I'm going to move some of this red over. and make room for some of the mixes that we're going to do. I'll need some more medium to get through. OK, so for, you know, really what we do is take a look at this and say, OK, what areas on the reference photo, what areas are dark, what's light, what's medium? And I'm going to go ahead and mix three mixes to get the dark, medium, and light um, I'm going to go ahead and pre-mix that. A lot of times what you'll see me do is quick mix up something and throw it on the canvas. I'm going to actually get three mixes on the palette first. And if they look good there, they're definitely going to translate over onto the canvas. So you'll notice I don't have any black. It's not like I add black and white to make a gray on, on the mix for the, for the shadow side. What I'm going to do is make that with the, the red, a little bit of the red that we had. Maybe a lot of the red. 
And so, um, I could go purple, I could go ultramarine blue, but I think I'm going to start with the ultramarine blue. And just see what I get. That's a very warm, it's got more red in it than I want. So I'm going to add, you know, that's what I'm asking myself. Is it too red? Is it too blue? Is it too dark? It's not dark enough, and it's not blue enough. OK, this is a good example of, this is a lovely, lovely shade of brown, kind of a mahogany color. It's nowhere near where I want to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm picking up a good portion of this mixture, and I'm just going to move it over. Maybe I can use it later, maybe I can't. But if I keep adding to this and keep playing with this, you know, we could be here all day. I never get the right color. So. Now I'm adding some more blue. That knocks it down a lot faster. That's a nice dark. I'm going to add a little bit of light or white to that just because the darks are never quite, ooh, <laughs> definitely need to, I don't want to contaminate my knife here. Add a little bit of white to this because the darks are never quite as dark in nature as you think they are. So I'm going to lighten that up. Oh, what a nice violet. I'm not even sure if it's the one I was looking for, but that's pretty. I'm open to change. I'm going to add a little more blue. It's just a little too warm. OK, so we now have a dark. Did I make enough? Uh, maybe. So this is a good dark. See how different this dark is from this red over here. That would have been just too warm. So now I'm going to start mixing a medium color. I'll add white to it, but you know what? I'm going to have to add more red and blue, too. Maybe a little orange. That's a nice light. Sometimes if I'm going for one color and I get something else, you know, that, that's what I make. And I just, <laughs> just go on to the next pile. This is actually a really nice light. Um, I'm going to stick that aside because I'll, I'll use that later. And I'll mix another one for a medium. Start with the blue, add some white. And I think I want a little bit of cad red light there. See, I think that's where I was going before and I never got there. Big difference between this mix and the other is the cad red light over here is a lot warmer than this cad red medium. So this is not consistent with these. I'm going to have to warm those up a little bit to get them where I want them. Or I could try, I could try making them with that purple, one or the other. OK, that's good. So now I have a medium and a dark. Of course, that's, not, that's definitely not going to be enough paint. Got a big canvas there. So I'm going to go ahead and make that mix a little bit bigger. Add a bunch of white, more blue. These are still harmonious. Add a little bit of that red. OK, so I know that because these, the relationship between these three colors works on the palette, it's going to look good on the canvas. That's, that's one thing that always blows me away is somebody will, will put three colors down or put some colors down on the palette, and they don't work there, and they, you know, they're screaming at each other, and expect some magic to happen by the time they go to the canvas. And that's not going to happen. you, you got to like what you see down here. OK. I'm picking just the right brush. At this point, <laughs> I, want, I want brushes that uh, are going to give me a decent amount of control. I don't have to have a lot of control, but uh, this one's stiffer. It's a little bit shorter. So I'm going to pick this one. 
or uh, you would think I would, but you know what? I think this one's older, so, <laughs> so I changed my mind. <laughs> I'm going to use this one instead. What is this? It's a filbert. Okay, I definitely need some medium to get that down. What does the medium do? It thins the paint, helps it dry a little bit faster, although I'm not necessarily concerned about that aspect of it. I just want to thin the paint. Okay, so what do I do? I'm, I'm going to establish the darks first. When you're approaching a painting, there are always goals to have in mind. I know when I first started painting, my goal was just to make it look like something. And um, then I got a little bit, you know, past that, and then I was worried about composition and other things. This particular painting, my goal is, where I live in Hollister, it's very windy, and the irises really move, and so they're not static, and I want the vibrancy and the emotion of the iris to come out in this painting, and it ha you know, I don't want it to just be some boring little flower there. So I'm going to put that kind of energy when I start painting, and hopefully it'll translate onto the canvas. So. If you just start painting like this, well, then there's no energy is going to start happening. It just, it, you know, it, it's a nice, calm little thing. But let's, let's take a look at what this iris really does. Well, in the wind, it goes like this. Yeah, that's better. And um, there's a little dark hair, a little dark there. There's a rhythm to it. Where else is there some dark? Uh, there's some dark there. The, the tendency is to put the dark everywhere, but there are a lot of different uh, shades of dark, so I'm going to be really careful about that. Um, there's some dark hair. Okay, see how I didn't just carefully plot a course. I just saw a big old blob of dark, and that's what I did. I put it in. Right now, that's what it looks like, but it really will make sense later. If you've watched the show, you know that that will happen. Okay, there's some dark hair. That's a different color. And I'm not, you know, I'm looking at this reference photo. There are only a couple places that are really that dark. The rest of them are kind of a medium dark. And you know what? I didn't mix that color. So, in keeping with the gal that I talked to, I'm not going to just brush mix and put it down. I'm actually going to show you what I'm doing. Um, I'm going to mix something in between this dark and this medium. Oh, that's nice. And since I don't think I have to go back into that dark, I'm going to use the same brush. I don't care that it's got the darker color on it. It can kind of brush mix. OK, that looks good. You notice I, I use a lot of tissue to wipe my knife. And that keeps the colors clean and consistent. That's really important. Now I think I'll go to that brush that has a little bit more control and put in some of the uh, lighter darks. So where do we see that? It's right here. It's a little bit dark hair. You know what? There's some red that I missed. It was, I was looking at it. It wasn't making sense. Like, what, what the heck is that shape? People, co people come into the studio, and I've got like brushes in my pockets, and I feel like a gunslinger. I've got all these brushes hanging out all over. But that way, they're always ready when I need them. Okay, so this kind of goes like this. That's better, much better. Yeah, that makes a lot more sense. Okay. Paintings have to make sense, so they don't work. Okay. You're just finding the darks that are in between and putting them in. I like that little that stroke there. That was fun. That's what irises do. They're not, they're not real. They're kind of foo-foo, 
and frilly, but it's kind of like somebody with hair that's always messed up. You know, they, they don't have to be exact. Let's see. This is dark right here, but not too dark. And I'm not sure what's going on there. I lose my place a lot. I don't care how long I've been painting when things are this busy. I usually don't paint things this busy. I'm always picking something that's going to help me grow. OK, that's a little bit lighter there. You'll also notice where I crop the reference photo, it's not, I'm not doing the whole entire iris. I was really concerned about the composition. So I, I cropped it on um, both sides. And I've done several studies from different formats just to see what it would do. What it would. We'll have to hang those on another show. OK. Like that there. What is that doing? I'm always asking the shape. What are you doing? What's your relationship to somebody else? The shapes all do have relationships. Okay. This needs to be. This goes down here. This one is another dark shape here. The energy in this is going to be different than, than the other contemplative pieces. Because if I scribbled before, I'm really scribbling now. Again, just find the darks. You look at your photo. You look at the actual subject. When you see an iris, just find the darks, put them in. And what you'll have when you're through is all that will be left. It'll be easy. All that will be left is the light. If you're doing watercolor, you could probably leave the paper blank. But I'm kind of like a bull in a china shop, so I don't do watercolor because I rip the paper. I, I've done them before, but not that often. Okay, I've got like a basic drawing in here now. I'm getting back to see what my, what my work is doing. I've actually got a mirror over here so I can see where is if it's working or not. It's actually starting to look like something, even though you know I've only got two colors in. So this is a good a good study in just putting a couple colors in. If you're getting your darks and your lights in the right place, you're going to come up with something. Okay. By doing this, it really helps me have a road map to see exactly where I am. This was dark here, but not quite so dark there. See, I'm going right into that red. What else is this doing? On the other side of this, it's a little bit lighter. Make a little green. Before I go ahead and do the white, I'm going to start to tweak the background a little because it's, you know, it's pretty loud. 
And uh, so I'm going to add some purple to it. And um, first we'll try some purple and see what's going on. And uh, depending on what happens there, or even a darker, maybe that, that mix that I made. Yeah. See, I change my mind all the time when I'm painting. The mix that I made that I didn't like for the shadow part of the iris is awesome as a backdrop here. Now, where does it need to be darker? It needs to be darker under the, this one petal because you want this sense of space. You know, the, my, the two things that I like to do, you hear me saying this over and over, are space and form. So I need to know that this feels like it's in some sort of space and that it's three-dimensional. It used to drive me nuts that my painting teacher would say, over and over and over, whatever lesson he was trying to teach me, he would say it over and over and over. I think, well, you know, I got it the last time we went to class. And, and, um, but, but what that did and that repetition did was that later, um, when I'm by myself in my studio, I still hear him in my head when I'm painting. He'll, you know, so, so the, the repetitive isn't necessarily bad, as long as I'm not boring you guys. Yeah, that color is nice. I'm leaving some of the other stuff back there. That's really nice. If you remember from some past paintings, I went through a really dark, dark phase, and I think that my work is definitely seasonal. And in the spring, there are more violets and yellows and golds emerging. In the winter, they're dark. Moody. In the summer, I'd probably stay with the bright red. Very nice. The other thing, too, about scribbling this, this stuff in is that I have no idea what I'm doing. So I, there are happy accidents that happen because, because I'm not conscious of what I'm doing in the background. So shapes and things emerge that I, you know, that I don't normally see. I had uh, somebody tell me today that they saw <laughs> unicorns and whales and all kinds of stuff in the background. I thought, wow. <laughs> I didn't paint that, but it was really cool that they could see that. So, and if, you know, if you start looking at, <laughs> I've you know, ever been bored and stuck somewhere and looked at walls and imagined shapes, well, um, that's cool when that happens in the background of paintings. That does kind of look like a face there. I see the I see the eyes and the nose. What I'm going to do because the shape here was bothering me, I'm breaking that up a little with this darker color and not filling it all the way. And hopefully that'll break up that shape enough. Okay. That was awesome. Now you've seen me do this before too, where I'm glazing it. But I really, I like the softness of the wet on wet. We're going to definitely blend this, um, the edges here, so that it's not some sharp edge. But that really, I'm going to step away from it. That really toned it down. The background's looking good. I'm, I always look in the mirror so I can get a better distance of my work. And you can already see that it's starting to look like an iris. This is good. As most of you know, it takes probably three quarters of the show before it gets to this stage. OK, so now I need to put in some sort of stem. Now this green would be just way too bright, even for my mood today. I'm um, going to have to tone that down. I'm going to use red, which is the complement. And also, by keeping the same color consistency, it's, it's going to be harmonious. That's going to make kind of a muddy brown. And because I want it a little warmer, I'm going to add some cad yellow deep. Mm. 
Ooh, nice olive color. I wasn't going for that, but I really like the color. So I'm going to use it. I like that when that happens. It also happens that I wasn't going for something and I can't use it at all. I got lucky. Okay, in order to make this have form, I'm going to paint, and I'm going to use this, this red brush because that will also help mix. Now, where is the light source? The light source is coming from the right. It's going this way. So this is going to be darker on this side of the uh, stem. See how technical that is for the stem. That kind of goes like that. And we'll lighten it up a little. Now I'm tempted to just brush mix that, but I really do need to add a warmer color in here because my brush is too dirty and I'll never make it. Now this isn't a lighter color in value, it's merely warmer and sometimes that's all it takes. We'll see. Well, not this time. <laughs> I need to add some white to it and a little bit of orange. If you can't laugh at yourself when you're painting, then you're going to run into a lot of trouble. That's why I have the sock monkey here. Keep me from being too serious. Okay, that's lighter. That's better. Not a heck of a lot lighter. So I'm just going to grab some straight white. Brush. And I'm not even going to mix it. I'm just going to go right in there. Now, I could probably save myself a lot of trouble if I would just get another brush and it wouldn't have all this stuff on it and I wouldn't have to worry about what's happening there. But no. Okay. I like that. Notice I'm going against the form and that gives it form. Okay. Definitely need to switch brush. What do I want? Okay. I'm grabbing this one and you all know that because this is short, it's going to have uh, I'm going to have more control with that and I'll really be able to sketch this in. Take him some straight orange because when I mix this with the, uh, I see a lot of orange in the reference photo. Maybe not as much as I put in, but then, you know, got to turn it up a little bit. Yeah, that's nice. Okay, that whole bottom's got to be dark. It's just going to kind of fade into the background. And I think I need a little more medium. It tends to separate, so I do shake it up a little bit. We talked before, make sure you have the lid on before you do that. Okay, yeah, that's good. See, that gives this some form. It makes it look three-dimensional. It's starting to get fat, which is just what I wanted. I'm going to add a little light over here. You notice that when I first start painting, it's like a, it's like a kid writing an essay. All my, all my mixers are clean. I do all my mixing here. I put all my palette up here. And then toward the end of it, it's all over the place. Okay, that's nice there. And you know, just throwing some red in there would be nice just because it's unexpected. And some green. I don't think I like what this is doing down here. It might be just too much. It's too, too, I'm going to have to cover that up with some red. It's too thick. 
Irish stocks are thick, but that I don't like that shape. Now, when I first started painting, I might have just got hung up on that area and, and let that go for a long time, but I'm, I'm going to move on to the white. Okay. I'm going to step back from it again. Starting to get some form. It's very dark under here, so, you know, I'm tempted to put some light in, but that's not a good thing. Now, I've got no room for my light mixes. So I got to move the paint over. And this is what I do when I start each day, start a painting session each day. Let's see if I can do this without it sliding off to the floor. I take my clean color, put it up at the top, and I throw out whatever mixes I have. Even with the oils, they get a little filmy overnight, and I want to make sure the paint's in the best shape it can be in before I start painting. That's a lot of nice red there. I'm going to move this over in the warm area. Normally, I try to line these up in, an, in a specific order, from warm to cool, and Today I didn't do that, which is also typical of how I paint. You know, I, I know what I should do as far as getting it set up, and I like to do that, but if I get it out of order, it doesn't throw me off. I just say, okay. All right, I'll move over some white, and we'll get that white part of the iris painted. room for this little bit of red, maybe. It almost feels like a waste to be getting rid of that, but you know what, this will keep, by throwing away these mixes that I just made, it'll keep me fresh in the white part of the iris. Yeah. So now we got a clean palette. I think the easiest way to approach this would be to stick mostly white and put color on top of it. But I'm also going to put some, some warm yellow mixes in there, too. Now, I have a choice. Do I want to use Cad Yellow Deep, Indian Yellow, or Cad Yellow Light? And I think I'm going to go with the Cad Yellow Deep, just to warm up this white a little bit. The Indian Yellow would take over. And the Cad Yellow Light. If you look at it next to the perylene red that it's next to here, these two, again, these two are not happy together on the palette, so they're not going to be happy together on the canvas. So I think this, this orange, orangey cad yellow deep is going to be a better fit. they got to be happy neighbors. Okay, I need more white and always more medium. We're going to put this down with gusto, too. It really makes a difference. If you're, if you're slow and doing mellow strokes, it's going to be a whole different painting. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just different. Notice again, when I'm squeezing out the paint, I put a bunch there and then squeeze, squish it down on here to get it off the, this part. I don't know what this part is called, or I'd give you the, <laughs> the technical name for it. OK. It's white time. Can't use any of the brushes that I used before. They're just way too contaminated. So I'm looking for something that's going to be fairly stiff and the right shape. Of course, I've used my favorite brushes, right? So I'm going to go see what else I've got. Ooh, this is good. This is a good one. All right, well, some of this is a little bit darker than others, so I'm going to warm this up a little, and let's see, what does this do? Put some hair. I'm not touching the purple yet. I'm, I'm actually avoiding it 
because it'll be easier to keep my colors clean if I do. And I'm not filling this in with any one color because that would be really boring. Okay, use your whole arm to get the stroke down. I could use some cooler colors there. What is this doing? Let's see, it comes down here. That probably is a light, but I don't want something there. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and put a lighter, almost a white, just a straight white in. I got to warm it up a little though, because it'll bug me. Maybe just a little bit. I mean, this is how powerful this uh, Indian yellow is. Just a little bit of that. Yeah. Now, I don't know if you saw how much I, I Cad Yellow Deep I put on there to get it this color, but I just put it, I just touch that and it, it takes over. Okay. Start getting to the point where we'll actually be doing a little bit of mixing, a little bit of contaminating. This is really light here. Unless I put in some more darks and some medium tones, it's not totally going to make sense. Got a little bit of red in there, and that's okay. That helps make it believable and harmonious. Okay, since I got this brush dirty, I'm going to go ahead and start doing some of the mixing. So this... I'll just take this color straight in here. The trick is not to just uh, play with it forever. I need to just put it down and let it go. That's kind of hard. What does this do? This, this thing moves this way. Instead of just painting it a stiff thing, it's moving this way. So we want that movement in here. Don't worry about picking up the red that adds to it. Yeah, I like that. Okay. I might tone it down a little, but um, but I like the basic. I can't add any white over there. That's it's everything over there is actually kind of dark, so I might just fill it in with a little a little neutral color. That whole thing is dark. Where else is it really dark? That's kind of a medium color. I can kind of, and I might tone it down. Sometimes I put things in with the white and then tone it down after. See how I'm just brush mixing it with the color that's already there? Okay. Now this is confusing. What's going on here? That needs. I think in order for that to really pop, it needs to be darker. This little shape goes here. And that's what I do. I talk to myself, like, where am I? What am I doing here? Is this? This is actually really light here. And I talked about not being too careful. Well, there are times when you do need to be careful, and that's I was right there. I'm actually contaminating it more than I wanted to. Now, rather than judging it, I'm going to get back and look at it. Not a problem. Even in its rough state, 
Okay, so this is some light here. You see how I'm holding this? I mean, it's not even, uh, it's not like a pencil. I'm not getting up close to it. I'm standing back from it and letting the brush take its own rhythm. And I'm bold enough to put the stroke down and leave it and not play with it. Now it's taken me, some people paint like that naturally. That, that did not come naturally for me. That's taken a lot for me to get to this point. Okay, now even though the shadow stops here, there needs to be some continuity because the leaf doesn't. So I'm going to just break that up a little bit. It's actually not a leaf, it's a petal. Okay. What are we doing here? This, this area here is confusing to me. And so what do I do when I'm confused? I go, <laughs> talked about this before, I go to the area that's not confusing, finish that, and then usually I have it down by the time I get there. So basically, I just lost my place. Okay. So now I'm going to brush mix and add, we need to have some darks here. This, this area here needs to be separated from this back area. Okay, so what does that do? That goes like this. This petal just definitely needs to look like, like one's in back and one's in front. And before, they were all pretty much in the same place. I'm going to kind of blend them together, and that'll help accomplish that, so that this looks like it's in front and this is in back. And also, there will be less detail back here, because I don't want your, you got to direct the viewer to where you're going. So. That's good. Now there is a distinct separation between this petal and what's going on in the background. When you're painting this big, it is quite difficult to see what the heck you're doing unless you have a mirror behind you and you can um, look in that mirror and say, oh, okay, you get that distance when you have a mirror back there. Yeah, I like that. That's working. One of these days, you all know that I don't use any toxic uh, chemicals to paint with and that I clean my brushes with canola oil. And one of these days, I'll actually take the time on the air to show you that. But today, we're not getting to that. I like this. I like it when I like what I'm doing. Okay. Again, we're getting to the point where I definitely have to stand back and see where the heck am I because I can't see. Let's see. Okay. Um. That's dark there. I think we just need to add a little more dark, which I don't have made up. So I'm just going to improvise. See, toward the end, I start brush mixing everything. Okay, in order for this to stand out, ooh, there was a little green there. How cool was that? I didn't, I didn't, God, that is so awesome. Sometimes things like this happen where I'll put a little bit of green in, or I'll pick up a color that was next to it and I didn't mean to, and I like how it had that, that whole little brush effect there. I couldn't have planned that better. Um, so I'm going to leave it. And what else is it doing down here? It's a little bit dark. And it needs maybe a, yeah, that's starting to make sense. They all have to make sense. Very logical things. Okay, so now I'm going to do, we're getting toward the end of our session here. I need to know, I need to really reestablish the darkest darks 
and the lightest light. Okay. And I'm putting in dark blobs again. Let's see, this is actually needs to be darker here, or that doesn't make sense. And there needs to be some like petal differentiation. So again, I'm just putting in a little bit darker blob. Yeah. Okay, that works for me. I notice that we don't even have any paint here, so definitely need to take care of that. I'm blurring these edges because I probably will go and touch it up a little bit after the show. And I am going to pick and choose which edges are going to be hard and which edges are going to be soft. But while it's drying, I might not make that decision. So as long as they're all soft, I can make that decision later. This needs to have a little bit more light in here. Like that. And there's actually a little more dark. Let's add some purple. That's what's mixing, missing. Yeah. And actually some red, because you just wouldn't think to put red right there. But it did have like a warm glow. And that was like a triangular shape. It's interesting how you get these geometric shapes in these flowers. But I think of things that way. OK, it's a triangle. It's a square. It helps me identify how, where and how everything goes. Yep, that's working. OK, this is kind of dark. We need a little bit of light here. Do I have a light brush left? Yeah. That's got too much red in it. I have to have a clean brush for that one area, or I won't have that separation. Uh, too much orange. OK, now that I've got this, oh, that's nice. See, sometimes these little red things, are, things that are in the wrong place add some nice interest. So then I'll make that mistake again on purpose. Put some energy into it when you're doing this. It does show up. Anything I don't like that I've done in this first statement, which actually could be darn near completed. Now, did you see how loose that was? You just put the brush down and go. Um, I haven't covered the canvas there, so I'm going to pick up a little more orange and just scribble it in. That adds a little more texture, a little more drama. OK, so I definitely need to get back. That's given me a better idea. OK. Yep. This is working. OK, so what I would do next is start to take a look at it, um, the background, and say, OK, there are some areas here that could be a little bit darker that would add a little bit more drama. I could add some green, add some purple, especially like right in here. In uh, other shows, I would just be glazing and glazing and glazing. This is a very direct method of painting. There's a little bit of dark hair. Usually, you want dark against light. So if it's lighter hair, you want a little dark there. 
in your slot. Eleanor, if you're out there, I hope that you, you gave it a shot and that, that you were able to do this in a step-by-step -step fashion. Got to break up this shape too. It can't all be the same color. So tempting. Okay. Now I'm just going to throw in a little bit of red because I like it. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that shape, that shape is not good. I'm going to see if I can take, I wonder if I can just cover it up. It might be too thick, it might not be. Oh, well, that's better. I think if this whole thing was dark down, yeah, that's better. But if the whole thing was dark, it wouldn't be such an issue. So what I will do to rectify the shape down here later is I'll probably glaze over the top of it just, just a little bit. Now, this is just a really good example of how much you can get accomplished in just a short amount of time if you just systematically take a look at the lights, the darks, and, um, and put your energy and your gusto into it. Don't be afraid to just throw it down and see what happens. And you know what? Sometimes I put stuff down there and I have it really good and I put something else in there that just throws it over the top and uh, that it's not good anymore. And you just paint over it. Definitely want to thank you guys for tuning in this time and watching Give Your Wall Some Soul. And I hope next time to hear lots more emails from you about all the exciting things that you've been painting. <laughs>